Hello and welcome to my Preserving Fiber Arts in Resin class. If you come across vintage tatting, some crochet or lace work while antiquing, you'll probably find that many of these hand embellished pieces are worn, stained, or torn. They still have value, but are difficult to repair. Many crafters incorporate these found pieces into new linens or wearables. I've discovered that embedding portions of the detail work in resin is possible and can result in some outstanding new jewelry art. In my workshop, I will show you how I cut, assemble, and protect vintage items and how to place them into a bezel. I'll explain the proper techniques to mix and pour resin and how to assemble a finished set of bezels into a statement necklace with handmade fabric buttons. This is my collection of tatting that I have found antiquing. I think every single inch is a work of art, and I can't imagine anyone creating yards and yards to decorate linens and clothing. This is why I choose to make a permanent keepsake from even the smallest sections. Tatting is a technique for handcrafting a particularly durable lace constructed by series of knots and loops. Because the knots are so strong, you can cut portions of tatting and it will not unravel. Tatting can be used to make lace edging as well as doilies, collars, and other decorative pieces. I managed to find several spools of tatting thread in my travels. The multicolored, variegated thread will create these gorgeous edging sections. The term for tatting in most European languages is derived from the French frivolité, which refers to the purely decorative nature of the textiles produced by this technique. My favorite sample, a handkerchief, is a perfect example of this. Clover, one of my favorite craft tools manufacturer, recently released new tatting shuttles. You can also view some of their projects on their website. A bezel in the jewelry world is usually a component that's just waiting to be filled with either a cameo, clay, beads, or resin. They can also go by the name settings. Anything that can contain resin is desirable, and that's why you'll see some wood components in my video too. I write a lot of how-to posts reminding you to seal your paper or fabric before you pour resin over it. I use all of these products as a sealer. If you're planning to place your tatting onto a paper background, I recommend that you glue in and then seal your paper first. What you are doing is protecting these surfaces and fibers from coming into contact with the resin itself. Left unsealed, fibers will absorb resin and appear stained or wet permanently. This may be an effect you want, however, it's never even. I want my papers and fibers to maintain their coloring, and by sealing and waterproofing them, I can keep their original colors from getting darker. Since my sealer is also a glue, it allows me to place my tatting into my bezel and trim away any excess threads. I seal my images, background papers, and fibers by brushing several coats of a clear drying medium or glue over everything. I let the sealer decoupage medium thoroughly dry between each coating and I do this three times. After I have applied three separate coats of a sealer, I let my bezel dry overnight. This ensures that there's no moisture left in the glue. Paper imagery is fun to source for my resin projects. For permanent tatting keepsakes, I try to select images that will not take away from the lace work. This greeting card background is a great way to recycle a card that would have been thrown away. I think the theme enhances my tatting sections brilliantly. At this point in the process, I take some time to mix and match my tatting sections. I want to be sure that they'll be visible against the darker background. Once I'm happy with my placement, I then glue and seal as I just showed you in the first wood bezel. You don't have to work on a paper background. There are plenty of bezels that are already a color. With this grouping, I just experimented with placement to see which tatting section appeared the most visible against the solid color, which was predetermined by this bezel set. Sealing tatting or lace directly to the bezel is no different than if you were working on a paper background. 
just be sure to press the tatting directly to the plastic. The slicker surface sometimes means you need to press your brush more to ensure good adhesion. The same idea is true if you want to place your tatting directly into a metal bezel. Sometimes the metal is too bright to showcase tatting sections. I often paint the interior white to make sure that my tatting pops under resin. These are some well-known brands of resin. They can have different names, but essentially you're looking for a two-part epoxy resin kit. Each resin manufacturer supplies their own instructions. Since I don't know which resin you'll use, you must read the enclosed instructions. The important thing is to work safe and wear gloves. Most resins are a simple one-to-one -one ratio mix. In other words, you must pour equal amounts of each of two chemicals into one cup. The measuring is crucial. You cannot eyeball this and you need to work with cups with exact measurements marked. You'll have a successful cure only if you measure and mix properly. It is certainly possible to simply pour resin from your cup into your project. However, when I need more control, I take the extra step to put my resin into a bottle with a Yorker cap. This also brings up the matter of garbage. Several of you will wonder if anything that you use to mix, paint, or pour resin with can be reused. I throw everything away. The time and energy needed to clean something that has resin on it or in it does not in my mind make practical sense. For this reason, I try and locate inexpensive brushes, bottles, stir sticks and cups in my travels knowing they're a one-time use tool. You can see here how much easier it is to pour resin exactly where I want it working with my bottle. If your bezel is deep, you can do more than one pour. The first pour can cover all of your inclusions. When that layer is cured, you could add extra lines or paint and do a second pour, often called a doming layer. If your bezel is really shallow, this might not be possible. Just cover your paper and tatting with one layer and you'll have a gorgeous finished piece. Lots of people say they have trouble with air bubbles in their resin pieces. After I pour resin into my bezels, I usually babysit it for 30 minutes to an hour to ensure that I've released all the bubbles. I do this with a lighter. You would not believe how many times I've left too early and come back the next morning to find one pesky bubble cured in into an important section of my bezel. This rarely happens if I babysit it for at least an hour. Part of what I consider babysitting is ensuring that my resin is covering the entire area of the open bezel. A toothpick can assist you to move it to where it may be needed. Here are my bezels after one pour of resin. They look fantastic, but we can do more. When your first pour of resin is cured, you do have an opportunity to create another layer of interest if the bezel was not filled right to the rim. You can add extra lines or paint and do a second pour called a doming layer. Resin poured on resin is an easy way to create the appearance of suspended items. It also gives you the opportunity to make a repair if, for example, there's a bubble you want to sand away or cover with a bit of glitter or a sequin. You can decide on which pieces you'd like to continue embellishing and then use paint or gel paint markers to add extra lines of interest. I rarely have a plan when I do this kind of embellishing. Usually I add dots or lines because I want to enhance an area that I would like to see pop a little more when I pour resin on it. It's fun. This is the best part of working with resin. You have an opportunity to do one more layer, which will ultimately look fabulous. 
I've experimented with a lot of different markers. The important thing is to make sure that everything dries before you pour resin over this layer. It would be easy to just simply pour resin on top of the resin surface that's already cured. However, my favorite technique is to apply it with a brush. I call this a glaze layer and I have a lot more control ensuring that I don't have an over pour and I make sure that I cover everything. Resin is a medium for people with patience. While it would be lovely to work on a piece and wear it the same day, that just isn't the case with this special medium. You need patience when your resin is curing. In 24 hours, most resin will look and feel like it's ready to work with. However, most do require a full 48 to 72 hour cure. If you can leave your pieces untouched on your table or in a sunny window for the full cure, you'll have fewer scratches and nicks as you join these pieces to other jewelry components. I hope you've enjoyed this project. Please join me on my regular blog, I Love Resin, for lots more inspiration and ideas for working with this amazing medium.